After the cleansing of the offices of Diablo, Hearthstone, and Overwatch, the path to the last sanctum is laid bare. Therein waits the WoW Dev Team, uncorrupted but blinded by pride. The WoW Dev Team is the penultimate boss of the dungeon, a council encounter consisting of three bosses with shared health, and a mechanic in place called Time Gating, which causes all damage dealt to be delayed until 60 seconds have passed. Repeating every 60 seconds, of course. As you engage the WoW Dev Team, one of them will immediately receive the Edict of Brack buff which reflects all damage. After 20 seconds, the edict jumps to a different boss, so be mindful of your targets. One of the two leads you fight while the third one has edict on him will periodically receive We Hear You. Once this buff expires, the Hear Does Not Equal Listen happens, which drops a number of modes of feedback on the floor, the amount of which is proportional to the damage dealt to a boss buffed by We Hear You. Now let's talk about the lead game director. The moment the the encounter starts, he will use patch X.0, which spawns a fuckton of debris that acts as LOS barriers. Standing in them when they appear will simply knock you back, nothing more. His other abilities include We Agree, which creates a little round field. Doing damage while standing in the field will cause time gating to tick at a rate of 2 per 1 second. While in the field, however, he will attempt to spam However, an interruptible channeling spell that increases his dodge chance by 100%. And finally, that said, will transform the field into a ticking bomb, which deals damage to players inside it and releases modes of feedback based on damage dealt by the explosion. You have now heard me mention modes of feedback twice, so let's talk about what they do. For this, I need to give you more insight on the lead marketing director. This mob cannot be tanked and will constantly move around the area creating mayhem with interactive marketing, locking onto a player for two seconds and then unleashing dangerous eruptions in a line towards the target's location. If you stand in either one of the explosions, you get wholly damaged and lose 5k of your gold. Try to avoid this at all costs. The last thing you want to do in this dungeon is lose or spend your gold. I will tell you why later in the video. Another deadly and gold-sucking ability is the six-month subscription bundle. This creates a rift that tries to suck all players in, and in addition, all modes of feedback on the floor get sucked in as well. Players who stand within the main suction area are pulled in faster, so don't stand in it. However, for every mode absorbed, the suction circumference grows in size. It is for this reason that you want to soak in as many modes as possible, which you can only do when the bundle is active. And the last ability in his spellbook is Thorough Fruticulture, which polymorphs all players who are female characters. Dispellable. Let's talk about the last guy, lead narrative designer, someone the tank should watch out for as well as the rest of the group. Inconclusive Outcome is a dot that deals heavy shadow damage every 8 seconds. Joining the lead narrative designer in combat is his pet, the chief antagonist, who implies confusion on the lead narrative designer's target. Confusion makes Inconclusive Outcome tick faster. For this reason, you will want to get rid of the pet before the dot escalates and becomes lethal. Doing so, however, will trigger an empty resolution which deals shadow damage, however, dispels all stacks of confusion. Killing the pet, however, spawns a second one, the chief antagonist Mark II, who applies frustration instead. This makes inconclusive outcome deal more damage, same thing as usual. Killing the pet dispels all of his debuffs and spawns another one. Chief antagonist Mark III, who uses annoyance, which adds a movement speed slow component to the tank dot. Killing Mark III spawns chief antagonist Mark IV, who uses is Grief, which combines the effects of all of the previous chief antagonist debuffs. This is basically phase one. Once the first time gating buff expires, the second one begins for another 60 seconds, and with it, phase two. Pretty much the same as phase one, but with a few additions. The lead game director will use patch X.1, which cleans up half of the room's obstacles, but instead debris starts falling in, which you will want to avoid. Whereas the lead narrative designer will use narrative virtuoso, which replaces all tooltip icons and ability names with question marks. Furthermore, the lead narrative designer also learns a new ability, Retroactive Continuity. This needs to be interrupted at all times. It's a high-priority interrupt, as it will restore everyone's health lost in the previous phase. 
Phase 3 begins with the end of the second time gating. The lead game director will use patch X.2, which finally removes all obstacles from the area and limits the amount of cave-ins by at least a half. Whereas the lead narrative designer will unleash No One Knows, which hides all visual indicators of area of effect abilities used by the WoW dev team. This makes the lead marketing director even more deadly. And that's it. Very easy. Enjoy the loot. With the defeat of all of Blizzard's death teams, the black heart of their corruption unravels at last. <laughs> Activision Advance is the last encounter of the Blizzard Entertainment Mega Dungeon. Let's dive right into it. Take note that the edges of the encounter area are enveloped in a strange fog. Do not step into it as it will result in an instant kill. Throughout the encounter, an NPC named the CEO, we all know who it is, will issue a message in the form of a letter from the CEO. This ability marks five small areas around a random player, and the impact zone deals shadow damage, and on heroic and above, they also create portions of the killing fog in the impact zone. The CEO's health is linked between his two senior representatives, the Brand Ambassador and the Activision Grand Apostle. Let's talk about them. The Brand Ambassador is the tank's main target as well as the CEO's vanguard. Every auto attack from the Brand Ambassador applies a stack of bribe, and he will also periodically use mass bribery to apply 10 stacks of bribe on everyone in your group. Anyone who reaches 50 stacks of bribe gets irrevocably mind controlled. Because the tank is the Brand Ambassador's main target, he will be the one who gets bribed the fastest. To avoid this from happening, players can interact with the CEO's ability, Billy tedium. This causes the CEO to throw high-value denominations and scatter them around the encounter area, which creates moving swirlies that will hurt you and knock you back if you touch them. Very deadly if your back is turned towards a killing fog as it will knock you straight into it. Stepping into the swirly will also remove all of your bribe stacks, but will spawn additional swirlies as a result. He will also use Disseminate and cover up story. Disseminate is a 5-second buff that splits all damage dealt to the CEO and his servants in the last two seconds of the buff between all players. Whereas Cover Up Story is a 10 second buff that heals the CEO for all the damage you have dealt in the last five seconds of the buff. Similar to Mimiron on hard mode in Ulduar, there are small adds called Corporate Drones which only have one health so it is very easy to kill them. You will want to avoid doing so however as they will help you clear the Swirlies. But if you do kill them, they will spawn a Swirly instead, so pay attention on who it is you are hitting. Then there is the Activision Grand Apostle, the harbinger of the CEO's will. Virulent Speech is an instant cast spell that slows a random player's movement speed and buffs the movement and attack speed of the Brand Ambassador by 70%. Both the debuff and the buff are dispellable. Restore Image is a channeling spell that heals all mobs by 5% of their maximum health every 2 seconds. Because this is a channeling ability, you will want to interrupt it as soon as it comes up. Warp Workplace shoots a beam that follows a random player leaving a damaging trail in its wake that gradually disappears over time. 
time. Positioning here is key, as the beam and the trail can one-shot any corporate drone it crosses. Toxic Exposure is a debuff put on a random player which deals shadow damage in a wide area. But the further the victim stands, the less damage is dealt to his allies. Shortly before it ends, however, the Apostle will use Promise of Change, which teleports a player farthest from the victim of Toxic Exposure halfway between them. With this, you gotta be careful so as not to get teleported into a swirly or a killer fog. The CEO's ultimate ability, however used infrequently, summons a team of 10 managers in a line. These guys will hold formation and march down the encounter area, leaving a trail of killer fogs behind them. This works pretty much like Nurzul in the Shadowmoon Burial Grounds dungeon. Killing a manager removes all killer fogs in a straight line behind him or her, which creates a safe spot. Once the middle management completes its journey, all fogs they have left behind will disappear. Take note that on heroic difficulty and beyond, only the fox spawned by the middle management are removed when you kill a manager. And on mythic, only one manager can be killed, so make sure to coordinate your target. Once you do that, immediately start running towards the CEO, because once the middle management phase is over, the CEO will get a 20 second debuff that increases all damage dealt to him by 30%. Here you gotta be careful, because disseminate and cover up story can screw you over if you are not paying attention. Well, that's it. Enjoy the loot. It is done. The CEO falls, his dominion broken, his minions scattered, and the root of his evil no longer sustainable, fading forevermore into memory. Unless, unless you are here on Mythic, because on Mythic, the rift that first brought them here yet remains. I require aid. I want to talk with you today about our conviction to create the most welcoming and inclusive workplace. The Elder God of Dread and Gluttony unleashed. Here at his seat of power, the CEO's corporate nature takes full form. Take heart, for here you will find yourself challenged by a barrage of movement-intensive abilities and more. The old god Katik sees through the player's soul, using sense demand throughout the encounter that increases the rage, energy, focus and mana cost of all player abilities, making them more and more expensive as the fight goes on. In the event that you use an ability without the right amount of resources, work them till their debt will kick in, causing you to pay with your health instead. You may remember that I have warned you several times against losing or spending gold in the previous encounters. The reason boils down to this. Another Monday purchase. Using the gold you have spent or lost throughout the dungeon, the old god Katik will commission battle-worthy vessels to bombard the platform incessantly with carbonated munitions. Notice how the impact causes shrapnel to detonate, expanding the AoE effect. Mobility becomes slightly limited over time, as Katik unleashes Modus Vivendi. This undispellable debuff deals shadow damage every second, which can be nullified if you are near one player. But only one player. More than one will allow the dot to keep on ticking with impunity. Eventually, this debuff evolves into Expedite Merger, which forces you to have two players near you rather than one, but only two. More or less than that will not nullify the debuff's effects. And finally, the debuff's last evolution becomes Active Vision of Katik, for which you will need to be huddled near three players exactly. 
To keep the tank busy, Katik's foul breath will permeate across the platform, creating pools of putrid filth that can be shrunk and mopped up when standing in it. Doing so, however, applies discontaminated to the Soaker, which deals increasing shadow damage with each stack. This effect is dispellable. Katik's body is host to large sinuous limbs with which he renders his will and might far-reaching and ever-expanding. With Liquidate, Katik scoops up and sprays a portion of the platform, followed up by a wide sweep of his massive appendage. From time to time, ruination occurs in which he grabs one player, throws them between himself and his current target, followed up by a damaging wave that you have to avoid. Less often than that, Katik will perform a triple assault, in which he grabs his current target and slamming them several times in a row. Each slam deals 20% of the victim's current health and creates shockwaves in circular patterns that players need to avoid. Lines marked red deal damage when a slam occurs, yellow ones do not. Now what happens if you take damage from one of Katik's appendages triggers displays wealth, causing your gold to spill over. You can and should recollect it as soon as possible, as the boss will attempt to gather up any dispossessed gold with a money-grubbing sweep, and later use your hard-earned money to bolster his fleet with additional ships. To keep the DPS busy as Katik himself is immune to damage, immobile adds called Daunting Outgrowths will spawn which will apply Deep Depression, a stacking dispellable debuff that reduces healing received by 1%. Every 30 to 45 seconds of the encounter, Kutik uses inexorable gluttony, capturing one player in a deadly grasp, dealing 132% of their maximum health over 4 seconds, healers. After that, and only if the victim survives, they get tossed away towards the flagship of Kutik's navy, the Paycheck. While aboard the Paycheck, the player will retain any stacks of Sense Demand gained while fighting the Malformed CEO. However, additional applications of this debuff do not reach as far as the Paycheck's board. Here you will notice that the ship is rigged with traps that you have to maneuver through. There's also bits of treasure called Gifts of the Extremely Small and Cushiony. These represent the loot that you get after beating the encounter. As such, if you want to walk away from this encounter with as much loot as possible, as well as getting all of your gold loss and spend in this dungeon, make sure the treasures do not get destroyed. This is because the paycheck is flanked by the HMS Jeffrey, and its crew will from time to time point its batteries towards anyone who is aboard the paycheck. Be very careful here as munitions fired from aboard the HMS Jeffrey may destroy the gifts of the extremely small and cushiony. After making it all the way through Katik's array of traps, you will arrive at the paycheck's engine. As soon as you do, pop all cooldowns and dish out as much damage as possible. After you have spent some time aboard the paycheck, the ship's anti-personnel systems will activate, killing anyone on board instantly. Avoid this by using a lifeboat, which will bring you back to the main encounter platform. And that is the Katik boss encounter. Once the paycheck's engine drops to 20, it goes haywire and condemns the ship to a collision course with the Elder One himself. Now at last, the torment is over. The shadow that once hung over Blizzard Entertainment is dispersed, and so the rebuilding may commence. Enjoy all the gold spent throughout the dungeon as well as your much well-deserved loot. Alright, that's it. We're done. Anyway, oh shit, I forgot StarCraft and Heroes of the Storm. Okay, 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 this is gonna be quick. The StarCraft dev team is dead. And so is Heroes of the Storm.